is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here, second time today we have the Tiger Technicians Hour and that hour at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock was a very important one because things happened in that particular hour that was very cogent for me. It, it said uh, what I've done yesterday and I'll go through it now, let me just go one, one step at a time. So yesterday I had said to subscribers to my opening call in the early morning I sent out between 8 and 8.30, I sent out my newsletter. And I said that as far as I'm concerned, if um, if the Dow starts to uh, turn around and go lower and the S&P starts to fall below a certain point, um, I want to have, we are long, three times long on a trading position. This is the short-term trading positions that we've added to other, other than the longer-term positions we have, three times long the Dow. I want to have a stop in place, but at the same time, I want to be able to buy the S&P, <clears throat> the three times short S&P, small position there, of course, three times long, small position is still a pretty big position. Um, <clears throat> and it'll be, it'll be there, and we'll have to see what happens next. Only why? Because in leg D in the Chapman methodology, oh, this is, a, this is a different hour, so let me do this. I'll find it right here. I'll just do this real quickly. In the Chapman Wave methodology, there are a couple of things that happen. One is <clears throat> I try to identify the lowest low bar and count each successively peak, alphabetizing them sequentially to the upside, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. But it's at that fourth highest peak. One is A, two is B, three is B. This has got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D. Completely different, completely different to the Elliott Wave, something I discovered back in the late... Uh, 1970s, early 1980s, <clears throat> part of the Chapman Wave methodology. It's at that fourth highest peak that other things can happen. But if the price gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, implies there should be at least a leg D, to, a peak D to the upside. It can go higher, but at that D, other things can happen. That's number one. Number two is I'm always looking at certain patterns: straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. And a combination like one and two and one and three. Yes, one and three. Why is it red? Because if the price arches over at a peak A or B, it fails and takes out that left side low, it can go a lot lower. And on the right side, if it pulls back and then it starts to move high and takes out that left side high, it can go a lot higher. So it's green. Uh, let me see. Oh, and the other thing that I like to look at here, and this is really important, is I like to look at narrow rectangle formations and large rectangle formations. All right, enough with that. Now let's get back. Let's move this away and get back to our story. <clears throat> We're in leg D. I anticipated there was a chance that if we started to pull back, even though, and I use, uh, unlike uh, many of the uh, technicians here, I use moving averages, I use uh, MACD, the stochastic, the on-balance volume, uh, relative strength, RSI, I used nine period, uh, something I discovered a long time ago, nine over the 14 is just fantastic, or nine under the 14 is fantastic to get you in and out of positions or keep you in a trade much longer than you anticipated. So because of that, I had a price for the SQ, for the UDOW along um, a stop. It, it held yesterday. At the same time, the SPY went underneath two, oh, let me just type this in here. The SPY, late in the session, went underneath 208.09, uh, 10, I believe it was, went to 208.09, and I said, we're going to get a short via the three times short position. And then today I said, it happens every once in a while, we have the two positions along the short, and you say, well, what's the point there? But I said one of them is going to be uh, taken out, and we will then stay in the position if it's long and, <clears throat> and switch if it's short. Well, I sent a note at about 12 o'clock this morning. What time was it? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was just before 12, about 11-something. Um, I said, get out of your SPXS. Stay with the UDOW. Why? 
because the the Tao was acting so well, and the so the the three times long was actually up about point fifty nine, and the three times short S and P was down point uh, uh, thirty one or something twenty something. I said, let's get out of it. So we took out a real tiny loss uh, in the uh, the S and P, <clears throat> and we remain long. And this could change because this is uh, something very important. Look, you've gotten to a leg E. We got to the D, pulled back, made a cup formation. And now, so far, the day is young. But if we can close above 411.92, the high of the 4th of um, April, that's a really good sign because the, the, the 9 is still way above the 14. The MACD is still strong. This is the S&P, the SPY. And then the on-bounce volumes already had a little bit of a pullback because it was overbought. And the relative strength is actually strengthened. And we've broken out in the weekly chart for yet another cup formation. And this cup formation, although it looks more like a V-shape, but it has the principle of going from one point down and then back to that point. If it takes out and goes to a leg D, above SPY 418.31 at 0.32. One penny starts leg D. So this becomes, at this particular point, uh, quite a positive action because the Champ Wave Inside Track Weekly repellent zone has become a propellant zone. The MACD's made an M-shaped pattern, very positive. Stochastic's still kind of weak, 67, which could be very positive if we keep going higher. And the on-balance volume of the weekly is still lagging. And look, the monthly chart, this is a peak A, that's a peak B. Gosh, I forgot to put that in on the SPY. So this is an A right here, peak A, gray A, and a gray B. Why is it gray? Because the MACD has not yet turned up across positive. The stochastic's still down at 42%. The on-balance volume is fabulous. And the nine period hasn't crossed positive. So this just says, I've, I, I, if it goes to a leg C, I probably will have to call that a buy signal in the SPY. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technician's Hour, where I do a lot more technical analysis of the champ wave itself. So a couple of questions. So someone asked me uh, in the den, uh, where, where would the resistance be on the TQQQ? So let me just show you. I've got the QQQ. I did an analysis a few weeks ago. I think it was John in Philly that asked me about it. And what I was looking at was this, this cup formation. <clears throat> and it's a very elaborate one. It's more how oh, it's going to look messy. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So the, you remember I spoke about the rectangle pattern and the narrow, the narrow rectangle and the large rectangle. Well, this is a large one. I call it a lopsided gravy cup. Well, what happens is it goes down quickly. Then it starts to make higher highs. And mostly higher lows. It did get to that peak D. There's your sharp drop after that peak D. Now it's sort of a brand new move that I call E slash A, really. And then F slash B with a doji candle last week. The week is young. We've still got a whole, we got, we've got an hour and a, 45 minutes to go today and the whole of tomorrow. Anything can happen. We could get bad news at the open tomorrow, economic news. Everything could tumble down. But <clears throat> if 311, three, sorry, <clears throat> let me just get this throat away. Oh, a break up now. If we get the Q uh, to go from 390 right now to anywhere in the three, I'd say three, three, point, I think that's hard. Right. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman. Usually, uh, I do the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 a.m. My service here is the uh, opening call daily newsletter. So, what I'd said is, as my show was finishing at 11, I didn't have a chance to do it as thoroughly as I did because I just grabbed it at the last minute because I was talking about the techniques. And I, I said, I know a lot of my charts look very complicated, but each one is just built up on a very simple technique. I look at price time. I call it the price time match. And basically, it is just bar symmetry. You look at the number of bars on the left, and you try to find a pivot point, or at least I call it a plumb line, the mid midline. That's like the mirror image is going to start the number of bars on the right. And what I had said that the E-mini should attack yesterday's high at about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, which was at 41.45, I believe it was, 41.54. Um, and I said it should do it by 1 120. Now, the reason why I said 120, I did it real quickly, but I, I didn't have a chance to uh, uh, draw in everything I had. Look how simple the technique is. So here we are at, uh, what time was it? Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right there. Right there. And I said, I'm not even sure we had gotten there. And I said, so my target would be, <clears throat> this is the plumb line. And I would expect that at 1, it turns out that the exact time that I should have said was right here, and I usually, what I've la lately done, well, not lately, actually for months, I try to put an X in to say, that's the time that I'm looking at. Bam, there's the X. So what was the time? The time would have been right there. I say 120, it was, oh, no, it was, it was 120. Okay, so 120. And uh, we were down here at the time in the 4140s. But the reason I said that is because we were making higher highs, higher lows, and there was momentum to the upside. And this is the way I like to look at things as simply as possible. Then what I like to do is I like to, I didn't have time to do that, I would grab 
a particular point on the left. Now, I have webinars on this. If you're a subscriber to my opening call, you'll be able to get all those webinars. They discuss every one of these techniques. This is the chap wave inside wedge target, in this case, because it's going up, would be the target repellent line. So I would have drawn that in. But because I would have drawn it in if I had time, this, this looks like it's just missing everything. So I would have automatically have said, and I'll do it right now, even though I know what's going on, I would have drawn it to so 10 o'clock, 11, right there. I would have drawn it like that. And I would have said, okay, if it, it, it could be, we could get to that level, the 4145s, by um, 10, 11, 50, 10, 10, to, 10 to 12 Eastern time. But it, it looked like it needed a lot more time. So some of it is purely... Um, Technical, I'm doing just an arithmetic count from the left to the right. In this case, I just grab a, a particular trend line and then I, I match it up and then move it to the right, change the color. Um, but that's what I was looking at. But what I wanted to do earlier on, then I thought, now I've just done so much and I've got so many things going on. Um, but here's your left side, right side price time match to this particular level right here. And that said... If I chose the same level, then by at least by four o'clock today, we could be tackling this Eiffel Tower. That's another technique I'll discuss it in the morning if I have a chance tomorrow morning. Of 41.77.75, that could be the next target, and that could get there. And I use this particular trend line. This on the one minute chart, on the ten minute chart. This is. Now, the chart that I use with all the notations that I have, the other one was just a naked chart. I just grabbed it to say, you can make it as simple as you want. But look at these extensions to the upside. Now, each one is worked out. I like the parallel expans expansion when it takes the same number of bars up um, as it had on, on the left side. Look at that one and that one. And this one took a longer time, but it got there. And now we might even have a fourth one. And let me just see if I can put this in. I'll have to change the color. Let's make it, or well, the pink would be negative. <laughs> but let's just make it pink so you can see it. And that would be from that bar. There it is. So we've already exceeded that. So this is getting real close. We've already hit 41, uh, 41.73. So it's not going to take very much to get to 41.77.75. So this is, I want you to show you that technique because why? The question came up. Where do I think that the the uh, the TQQQ and I I don't know I should have asked Nancy is this very short term or just what? Um, but I'll, I'll do it either way. Uh, could you repeat, please? We lost you on the T. Yeah. So if I'm looking at this, as long as the, this is the weekly chart, this is the daily on the left, this is the weekly in the middle. On the right is the monthly, and it's the QQQ NDX 100 trading vehicle. If I use this plumb line right here. That could take me to, uh, that would be a new one. And that would take me right there. That would take me to the week of the 12th of May to get to 334.42. That's the projection. But the, the resistance is a little bit lower than that. The resistance is at uh, 31940, so this 319 level. Oops, I didn't mean that. That's wrong. It says 326. So I like to go step by step. The MACD is good in the weekly chart. The stochastic's fabulous at 94%. Anything over 90% is really good. 94% is outstanding. It says that you've got to be careful because at some point you're going to come back down under under 80%. But at this particular time, see if you go very quickly up and then break down, that's a, that's a really negative thing in the stochastic. But if you can hold flat, that's fabulous. And look at the look at the on balance volume. Still underperforming, so it has a way to go. So so far, this is looking much better. Now, now let, let me move this away. Now I could do something else. I'll, I'll do it just to show you that the other techniques that you can use. I have something that I, is a Chapman wave uh, su support and resistance lines that are automatically drawn. Um, so uh, I, I got Tesla up here. Tesla was a question just the other day. Where someone asked, where would where would I consider to buy? I, I'm still holding off right now on on the buy on Tesla. Uh, that's for that person. But now let's just go to the QQQ. So this is the 
10 minute chart it's broken above the 318 uh, the 318 318.64 resistance is the 319.23 that's a 10 minute chart yes support at 312.58 in the daily chart 317 is the next resistance it's above that then you have something way up at 327 it's broken all the weekly resistance levels the uh, 314 and 315 level on the 120 minute is broken. 319.11, exactly where we are right now, is the next resistance. And the monthly chart is 341.07. Look at that cluster in the 250, 243, and 229 level uh, in, the, in the monthly chart. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the surprise to the upside today after that ugly last hour yesterday, um, I like the action. But there's a lot that has to happen on the daily chart. Look, the MACD's turned down. The stochastics weak at 68. The unbalanced volume's trying to turn. But the 9 is still strongly above the 14. And that usually says if you can reverse after a sharp move below the 14 period moving average without the 9, the green 9 period moving average sliding under the 14, that's a good sign. You should have enough room to at least test the left side high. And that's 320 more. 63. So that's where the TQQ and the TQQ would have the equivalent of the next resistance of it's a little high actually it's at 28.36 in the 28.30s. So far this is acting well, but that 200 period moving average. I left. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I just need to show that in the Q TQQQ, which is three times long, the Qs and up 1.47 or 5.7. Um, if by tomorrow we're able to go above 28.43, by one penny, that'll in, that'll increase leg B. It means that B is extended. Remember, this is a floating letter. Once it breaks above A, it starts a floating letter, 
And that says when you make a peak, in other words, a lower high bar, the following bar, if there's a lower high, then it has to be called a peak. So far, it's leg B. And I've got it in blue because the stochastic is so strong at 91. That says there should be a buy mode to a leg D at some point. Doesn't tell you when. Other techniques tell you when. So the when says Q, Q, Q. And I'll tell you what I have to do. Always like to do this. This is on. Oh, this is because the market's so strong. It up Dow's up 351. S&P's up uh, 52. But you've got to be prepared for anything. There's still more news to come, economic news to come tomorrow and the next, whatever. But this is the level. If the QQQ in the next week closes under 309, uh, three, sorry, 311, that's going to say, uh-oh, lower lows and lower highs without making a new high, that's going to be a negative. And that says that weekly chart extends. But if there's still the strength going into next week, then I'm anticipating that over the next couple of weeks, we get, I'm going to go one step at a time. Three, uh, what did I say it was before? It'll be, this high here was 321. So we've already uh, surpassed that last week. Yes, I would just say 324 would be the next level. If we can get to 324 in the next three, four sessions, I'd say that's a really good sign because it's starting to help the monthly. Because look, the monthly needs to, the histogram of the MACD is improving, but the MACD is still very weak. It needs to, it needs to cross positive, and that's going to take a lot of time and price. And this is a spectacular move to the upside. Now, I'm not sure there could be, but this is fabulous. Uh, uh, so break out the Dow, 30, oh, 34,000. Uh, no, we're not there. 33,994. I've seen a stop right at $1 below. So it is A2 is saying the den. Break out the Dow, 34,000 hats. Not yet. Not yet. I like to go one step at a time. Okay, now let's do this. So, uh, so Nancy, if you're talking very short term, the target would be if the QTQQ goes above 320, what did I say, 20? Yeah, it just, it just needs to get into the 320s. Then that left side high within two or three sessions should be hit. And then that's where I would, on a very short-term basis, I would say, um, if that was your target, I would say that's where you can take some profits. But I would like to say to you that as long as the low of yesterday, which was at 312, was it? I think it was 312 something. Yeah, 312.57 on the QQQ is not taken out in the next three sessions. I would try to hold as long as possible. So you can take little bits off as money management. Uh, you're a team cheerleader. Um, are you on the team or the cheerleader, pom-poms? Uh, oh, oh, that's 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 the dad. No, 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 that's good. Oh, we've got 3406. Very nice. Thank you. Um all right. Now, I, I, when, on a day like this, it's so difficult. Don't get carried away. You've got to do your your um, you've got to do your homework, regardless. Because even now, with uh, an hour and uh, twenty something minutes to go, we saw that yesterday. It was that last hour when you suddenly got that pullback. Uh, so Nancy says, "Thank you, Basil. The twenty eight thirty resistance in the TQQQ is my break even. Oh, break even." I did not anticipate probably the downside we've had the past week, my fault. Oh, Nancy, that brings me to something else, money management. Um, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to everybody out there. Don't think it doesn't apply to anyone who's a prof professional because it applies to everyone. If you got into a position and it went against you, I've got a rule of thumb, and I've tried to stick with it for some time now, and mostly it's just it's the, been the best thing I could ever do. Number one is if you've got something that's going, and remember, this is an aggressive three times long position she's got, but if it goes against you, my rule of thumb is the moment you get to break even, and actually I've done this, I don't care about tax consequences, anything like that, I get I either get out of the trade immediately and I stare at it for about an hour or so and I say, okay. This is a brand new buy. I'm getting back in. But now it's a completely different trade. Now I can say I'm getting back in. This is my stop, and I'll be sticking to that stop if I'm wrong. But if, you, if, you've, been, if you've been sitting and, and sweating a little bit, I'm just saying to you, make a plan. As it hits your number, take half off and keep half on. Do something that makes it. And one of the reasons is 
I hate it when I've got, it hasn't happened for a long time, when I've got something that's just wagging its finger and saying, told you, I told you to get out, you didn't get out, now look. It just, it, it just irritates you and it just it bothers you and it affects other trading. At least that's what I found. It means you're not thinking correctly. I missed a couple of things for my subscribers because we had one small trade that went against us for about a 20, it was just small, it was a very low price and people didn't put huge amounts of money in. But it went against us for 25, I think average was about 25% loss. Um, and we got out, I said, we're out. I'm not gonna hold this because that, I cannot do it. Well, it sat with me because I know some, some subscribers must have got it, even though others had other positions that we had fabulous gains in. I, I just, it sat with me, and that's the reason why I didn't get into the low-priced gold stocks that I wanted to get in. I said, oh, I can't go through it if I'm wrong. It's not, no, I don't want it to affect me. So I'm saying to you, if you get back to break even or close, either take it off and redo the trade or immediately have a stop in and say, okay, I've been through, I'm not going through that again, but I'm prepared to have name a, name a 3% or a 2% loss or a one and a half point loss, make something you stop and stick with it. That to me is, is a lesson that, it's an ongoing lesson that some of us, uh, it just, it gets repeated no matter how hard you try. And I've tried for a long time not to have any, uh, any losses more than five or six percent because we can always make it up quite quickly. But when it gets to the double digits, uh, 15, 18 percent or 22 percent, it's just harder, even though it's a tiny part of the position of, of a portfolio. It doesn't matter. It's just OK, enough for that. Next thing I want you to do is so the questions came in. Um, OK, that dumped down. Uh, please review BTAI. I'll just, just do this real quickly because most people will not be in something like a BTAI. This is a very low price. Uh, oh, no, this is the one that's at 1804. Biocell Therapeutics. I, I had typed in what they did. Now I don't remember anymore because I had to redo that. Um, it's coming off a low. This is a good candle, but one good candle does not make a trend. So all I'm going to say is if you are in it, what I'm going to say to you is a BTAI, which is uh, BioXL Therapeutics, had a gap and it's taken forever to even get close to the gap, which is the high of 23.10 on the 10th of March and the low of 24.32. We, we were down in the 18s. We're now at 19.62. Until it trades, and I'm going to now go to the weekly chart, until it trades in the 22s at the 14 period moving average, which is still pink, pink means that nine is way under the 14. Until it trades there, you can't get rid of the gap, whatever that gap was. But once it starts to trade there and it holds it for a while, it says, good, whatever dragged, dragged this particular symbol down at that point is now history can look at it in a different way. So this is good, but 20.60 is the 200 period moving average. It hasn't even used that as a resistance point yet. So let's see what happens when it gets there. I'll be back down to 358. That's a piece of 52. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting in for this hour, the 2 to 3 o'clock hour. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So I had a question about SSL, but what did SSL? I want you to do. Yesterday, I had uh, um, somebody in the debt ask me about FCX, which is Freeport McMoran uh, Inc. Copper. And what I'd said is I did the work and it was down here. And I said if it takes out, if it starts to trade under yesterday's low, which would be Tuesday's low of 40.81, I had a, a, an option call, but I think it was just one option call. So if he had a few, I would have said at this particular point, take off one. Uh, you've got a little bit of a gain, and uh, I would use that as a little bit of a cushion. And I try to keep them because it's going into Friday. Anything can happen, and it's holding well so far after the gap up, and it had made a new recovery high. Well, it turns out it's now at uh, 43.06, so um, uh, we must be seeing a very happy camper there. And you've got until tomorrow. But I wanted to show you, this is the left side. I use a particular candle to get the bar symmetry. It's not from the plumb line. You couldn't do it. It's lopsided, like a gravy cup. So I used a different one, and I said that I anticipate that by the 17th, you should be getting to this level right here, which is... 42.31. Of course, not only did we do that early in the morning, but we're now trading at the high of there, 43.06. So I'm going to suggest uh, to, to if, if, if he's listening, um, that this is where you want to, if you're going to hold it overnight, if it closes at the high of the session, you're going to get the best premium you could. If there's a sudden pullback for whatever reason tomorrow morning, your premium will probably shrink about 20% of what it is right this very moment at the high of the day with another day to go. People will be getting uh, really excited. So I'm just going to suggest this is where you got to think about, did, did you reach your target? Is this kind of what you were expecting and hoping for? And now it's unfolding. So now's the time to be thinking, what do I do? It's, I'm leaving it up to you. Uh, if you had asked me what I would do, I would say I would just give it a little longer. If it closes the day anywhere at the high, no matter what happens tomorrow, you're getting a fabulous premium from what it was yesterday. Just consider that. If you've got more than one, that's a different picture. So let's go to SCCO, which is also a copy st copper stock, Southern Copper, trading SCCO, trading at 80.48, up 3.09, up 4%. This is a leg C, and it's just taken out. I drawn this in. I don't remember. Someone asked me about it 
recently, and I drew this in. It's an expanding wedge formation. Well, expanding wedge formation, um, people have all sorts of techniques involved with expanding wedge. I just say, just let the trend lines do what they have to do and then see where it goes. Well, lo and behold, you hit the bottom one uh, and took it out. You went all the way down to 66.47 on the 16th of March. Now it's gone peak A, peak B, leg C. And leg C is coming within fractions of this trend line. And then what do I do? I go like this, click green. You don't have to have all these techniques. You can do it very simply. But I like to do this because I've got it here in Trade Station. So what do I do? I go red. And I say, this is the Chapman Wave inside inside track repellent zone. It's just gotten to the first line of the repellent zone. If it closes in leg C above, in the next two days, above 80 um, I'm going to say above 82. If it pulls back, it should go even higher for leg D. And it's leg F. Now, this is the thing that I have a little trouble with because I'm just continuing the alphabet Y. Because am I going to call this a brand new A, which means you're still going to go to B, C, and D? I can't do that. So I'm going to say the MACD is good in the weekly chart. It's gone back to positive. Stochastic's a little bit weak at 75%. On balance volume is good. The 9 is way above the 14. To me, that's great. So I'm going to say there's a chance. It's only a chance that this isn't just a, a leg F, but it's an F slash A. Um, but don't get carried away because it's a leg D in the weekly. And in the cup, oh, let me just show you this. Another technique that I like to use is something that I call the falling X. It just looks like an expanding cone, but a declining expanding cone. And if I can just move that out the way, we'll get it. There it is. So you see this pattern right here? You run, run, run up, and you go to a D, E, or F, and then you start to make lower highs and lower, much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, it finds support, and it turns into either a V-shape or a cup-shaped formation, formation. And if it takes out the downtrend line, it could go one-to-one -to, -one to the upside in, in a diagonal move parallel, same number of bars to the upside. But you've got to look at all the, pe the peaks on the left side as resistance points. Well, there isn't much. Because you've already taken out this peak on the left side, which is the peak of the April of a year ago at 79.32. And then you go to the next high, which is at a peak B. I'm going to talk about this in terms of the S&P in a moment. Um, and that was at 83.29. And here you are at 80.53 in leg D in the um, monthly chart with a MACD strong stochastic at 84%. That's so interesting because high-grade copper itself is doing okay. High-grade copper, let's just go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper has just broken out. This is now a leg B. Look, that's a peak A from this low right here. The stochastic still weak, so I can't actually go blue. I'm going gray, meaning I'm still not in a buy signal. Um, I could if we close sharply above this peak A right here at the trend line resistance of 44.14 on the 24th of March. And today the high is 4.14.3. Oh, 4.143. And that was 4.148. So if this goes to 4.151, and that's a breakout, I'm going to have to call this a buy signal not yet a buy mode, and you're breaking out of the weekly. So you see what I'm saying? I had a call earlier this morning to say, what do I think about interest rates? And I said, there are so many conflicting things. Uh, look, the builders, BLDRS, which is the builder's first source, they do the construction, they do all sorts of things at an all-time high. All-time high. How can it be with interest rates like this? When I look at the interest rates, I'm saying... I don't think they're an issue right now. I think interest rates at this particular point are just stuck in a range. They're in the rectangle, which can last a lot longer than your patience. So until it breaks out at over 110, I'm thinking that um, it's just stuck between 110 and 99. Um, and it's range bound. So all the what is the Fed going to do? They, they're looking at all sorts of things and they're getting this conflicting information. Syntax. A beautiful move today. It's up four and a half at um, 4.58. It's, it's almost near all-time highs. This is overalls, uniforms, rentals. What is the Fed going to do? Look at the XLF, the exact opposite. Yeah, it's a good day today. Woohoo! It's up 27 cents at 32.55. 
but the financials already what the the uh, the people at the Fed on property are looking at in, in with great trepidation. They have no clue as to what's going on because of those two big bank failures. So I I suspect that this is not only a bifurcated market, even within sectors you've got that. If you look at Toll Brothers, Toll Brothers is um, holding steady. It's not breaking down. If you look at the HGX, which is the housing sector, it's gone peak A, peak B. It's just making a possible peak D today in the lower range. But it's not breaking down like you'd expect, like the Fed would actually want if they wanted uh, the... Um, if they want the inflation numbers to come down, boy, it's a tough thing. The Dow is up 376, S&P's up 54. Nice session so far. Be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. I believe Jacob should be sitting in for Tom, so it should be a great show. But what we're looking at as I wrap up, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And check out tomorrow, I'll do my show, Technical Friday, i do more of the Chapman methodology. So look at this, the Dow is in leg D. All the technicals are good. It's a very strong move up. 34,331 on the 14th of February was the high at peak D. But all the technicals at that peak D and all the, let me just drag this across and you'll see something very interesting. This is the daily chart, look. So, oh, it looks messy. So that peak D and that peak E back in December Look, the technicals were okay at that D. They were good. 
but they were much weaker than E when it were fractionally higher. Look how it fell to 32,573. Then it made another peak, A peak C D, to 34,332 on Dece on January the 13th. And then what did it do? The technicals were much weaker. And look how quickly the stochastic fell and it broke down. Then it hit the 200 period moving average, ran again to a peak D. This is the third one in three weeks, actually went to an E. So it's a, three out of four of them were Ds. 34,331 on the 14th of Feb. Look, the technicals were very weak. No, the technicals right now are strong. So it says that we should get to buy... Monday, the 17th, we should try for 34,331. That's if there's a left side, right side price time match, that's bar symmetry. So the key support now is at 33,000. I'd, I'd say at this point, point 33,600 should be very strong support if there's a sudden big slide. But we're getting to the chapter wave inside track repeller zone in the weekly, so it needs to break that. So it's the same thing with the S&P before we go to the break, and you're going to go over to, uh, to the uh, Tom O'Brien show. Uh, look, leg E with the technical still pretty strong in the, in the uh, S&P, and that says 4195 was the high on the 2nd of February. Uh, can it get there? Well, that's a long way to go. It's 50 points. But if, in fact, there isn't a sudden sell-off tomorrow on any economic news, and on Monday we actually get to 41.61, it says yes, in early April, we can this by mid-April, 41.95, and that will help the week. Charles. So have a wonderful rest of the day. Check out my opening call, uh, and I will uh, see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for the Tiger Missions Hour. Hold tight, hear the news, and you're handing it over to Jake.